check YouTube, make sure we're actually live. Let's see. Yes, there we are. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to share that out real fast. Give everybody a minute to get here. I feel like we need to have like theme music. I know, right? <laughs> One of these days we'll get around to making theme music for this. <laughs> I just need to get in that musically creative mode or something. I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> oh, hi. Wow. Lots of people all of a sudden. Uh -huh. Hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> How are you guys? All right. So for those of you who are unaware what this live show is even about, let's go ahead and talk about it for a second. So in this live show, April and I, we host a book club every month featuring some sort of retelling. We've played with all sorts of retellings over the couple of years we've been doing this. It's been, what, a year and a half, two years now that we've been doing this? year and a half? Uh, I think a year and a half. Yeah, a little over a year and a half because we started mm -hmm. the beginning of 2019. So right. that's when we started that. And I think this is the first Alice one we've done, isn't it? I think so. I can't remember any Which is Alice. so weird because I know you love Alice re retelling, so I'm surprised it took us long to get to one. <laughs> Anyways, so in this live show, we're going to be discussing A Blade So Black by L.L. McKinney. I'm going to send it over to April to give you a good description of it because my brain is like fried right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a great live show. I know, you. right? <laughs> <laughs> so in this one, we have a girl named Alice who stumbles across a boy named Addison who introduces her to the world of Wonderland and slaying nightmares. So you get this very almost Buffy-like feel from the whole storytelling, but it's very much riddled with Allison in Wonderland and through the Looking Glass references. And the whole point is that the nightmares are starting to take over Wonderland. They're going from our realm to their realm and they're just multiplying. And of course, this is after Wonderland has been fractured because the Black Queen has done some nasty stuff. The Red Queen has disappeared. And so the White Queen is trying to hold everything together. So that's a brief synopsis over everything that roughly it's you pertinent. Heard this yeah. Um the other thing I feel like we need to mention is we are featuring a Black main character in this particular retelling. So there is this vague undertone of racism because there was kind of a hate killing early on in the novel. And so you see her mom reacting in an extreme because of what happened to this girl who was, you know, close in age to our Alice character. And so you see her mom being overprotective at that point which I totally understand. And I think that was a smart choice on the author's part because that felt like a realistic reaction to a mom who wants to protect their child. Like to me, that just is how that should have been. That didn't feel wrong or overdone in any way to me actually, because usually in an Alice in Wonderland retelling, the parents are kind of just like, non-existent but in this one the mother is actually prevalently there and i think for this particular retelling that played oh that played off really well for me at least I don't yeah know well, and, and i almost started thinking of is we're, we're fighting these nightmares in this very like figurative imaginative world but then at the same time we have these very uh, realistic nightmares that are happening in the real world that mm -hmm. Alice is dealing with the reality of what she lives in and the fact that she is not only putting her life on the line fighting nightmares, but every day there's a possibility that she could die. And that is her mother's worst nightmare because she's all that her mother has at this point. Right. And so I just felt like that really tied in really well and felt like a cohesive part of the story. Mm -hmm. So 
let's get to some pros and then we'll get to the cons because I think we'll spend more time with the cons. So let's talk about the good stuff first and then we'll get into the stuff that we didn't like so much. So the book, things this book did right. I think adding the almost like Buffy element to it where we're slaying mm -hmm. things definitely did some really good things for me in regards to the story. I ended up really enjoying those elements, the slaying the nightmares, the, you know, battle style of it. Like, I just really enjoyed that. I I have to say, I also enjoyed the equivalent of Tweedledee and Tweedledum in this story. Oh, yeah. well, they were so perfectly written to me because they though they felt like Tweedledee and Tweedledum, they still felt a little more individual than most of the other characters to me. Mm -hmm. I felt like they got a little more work done to them than some of our other retelling pieces, I guess I could say. And I felt like that was really a, a well thought out choice on the author's part. Um, and I have to say in general, the world and the way that Wonderland came through to me was also kind of nicely done where it's just kind of this alternate like world and dimension that you go through a portal. It felt very portal fantasy that worked really well for me. And I don't think like it was obvious as it is an Alice retelling in that way. But I think just the way you get into the portal and stuff worked really well for me. Like I just enjoyed that element to it. And yeah. I I, I, I would have been like my biggest pros yeah. for this. I'll let you take it from here. Yeah, no, I I think the history and the backstory of Wonderland was very well thought out because you have this deep, rich war that affects everything that's happening up until this point. Mm -hmm. And I, I did like how they took that aspect of Lewis Carroll's universe. Um, I also very much enjoyed how nerdy and geeky Alice was because oh, yeah. she's a cosplayer. She did it with her dad growing up. There are yes. so many like Buffy and Sailor Moon references throughout oh, the yeah. I mean, just just when she like um, activates her sword. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Seriously. Moon power I was laughing whatever. so hard when I read that. I'm like, hello, excuse me. So, I mean, it was... It, those aspects just spoke to me on so many different levels and I loved it. And just seeing all of that play out, those were the things that I liked. And I'd have to agree, D and Dem, they were, they were probably outside of the core group that we're introduced to that mm -hmm. I really liked. Um, I think Maddie, who is, oh, Maddie was really well done as well. Yeah, the gatekeeper into Wonderland. Pure nonsense most oh, of the time. Wasn't she also the Dormouse? I, that's what I think she is. I think that's... I think so too. Like if Addison is... That just makes the most sense. Uh -huh. and, and he has a little bit of Cheshire thrown in him. Not fully, but he has a little. And, you know... You know, those we talked about this like off camera, but their personalities right. in right. Alice in Wonderland are kind of similar. But I felt like there was a little more Cheshire thrown into Addison than in the traditional retelling, which didn't bother me at all. I enjoyed it. It modernized him enough that it worked. Well, and I think Cheshire, he gets a lot more in the original story mm -hmm. than Hatter does. And so oh, it's completely so it made sense to kind of match them up together. So it's easier to see the aspects of the Cheshire. Um, but yeah, Maddie and the Dormouse, just be, you could tell from the way they talk and all the different tea times and, and that kind of stuff, which I thought yeah. was adorable. It that worked really well for me. And like there are characters that I felt like I I miss. Like, I didn't really ever see a true, like, March Hare in this story so much. Hmm. Not, not really. No. I, mean, well, I, I felt Mr. like I needed that. I needed he, that counterpart. He, he, was, he was there, but he was yeah. asleep most of the time at the bar. Right. So we never really got to interact with him. Because I think that's, I can't remember the character's name, but he was always at the bar. 
asleep at yeah. the bar. And I think that was supposed to be the March yeah, Hare. Unless that's the Dormouse and then Maddie's supposed to be the March Hare. Because the I Dormouse mean, is usually asleep, unless it's speaking nonsense. But I mean, even Maddie is falling asleep all the time. True. That's why I'm like, there wasn't really a true, clear March Hare that played off the Hatter. Like, yes. I needed more banter between them, I guess, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I needed, you didn't, you didn't I needed that. Well, I, I guess that kind of leads right into our cons, unless you've got more pros before. I'm oh, no, that. those. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> so basically, this book left me wanting more overall. Like, the Alice in Wonderland references were very blatant, except for the few kind of vague ones that we've mentioned, just because they weren't ever very clear. They were kind of muddy, but just there. And I think that's just it. There wasn't enough of the meat of Alice, but all of the very popular references were there. Mm -hmm. So like the parts that make Alice good, like weren't there. <laughs> and that made this retelling really hard. One thing, I guess one of the pros I forgot to mention is the writing is pretty simple and really easy to get into. So I feel like this one can go for a wider range of YA readers. Like you could hand this to a 12 or 13 year old and not be too worried about it. You know what I mean? And, you know, as long as they can handle kind of a scary nightmare kind of factor. I, as a teen, could not have because I'm a wimp. But there are lots of teens out there who can handle that kind of stuff much easier than me. So as long as you know that about your own kid, you should be fine. But it's one of those things where, yes, the writing was easily accessible, but almost too much so, where the story kind of lost its potency that it was trying to have. And then secondly, the whole race issue, they really could have done a little bit more with that, and they didn't. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there's these big powerful things that are happening at the end and I felt nothing like I have no emotional attachment to the characters or to what was happening to them. And I think that was this book's biggest flaw for me. And I, I'm a very on the surface emotional person. I cry at most things. <laughs> like I just do. I cry over stupid teenage boys playing volleyball. Like I cry over silly things. And this story made me feel nothing. And a character died and I felt nothing. And usually I feel something, but I felt nothing. Mm -hmm. Anyways, take it away. Yeah, no, the, I, I sort of touch on this every time I read an Alice in Wonderland retelling is there, there are several different camps that these kind of retellings always seem to take. And because Alice in Wonderland is so well known, but it's well known to the point that most people haven't read it, but can still quote it. Mm -hmm. And that's what this book kind of does. It's like yeah. smack you in the face with all of the very popular lines with the Vorbo blade and curiouser and curiouser and all those things that anybody can pick up on, which is good for that universal kind of read. But it feels a little cheesy because of how oh, much yeah. it's done. And yeah. the fact that Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass have this very dreamlike quality. Whether you decide to take that the whimsical direction or you decide to take that the very dark nightmarish direction, either one of those is fine by me. But right. this book doesn't take either of those. Right, it tried to play the middle and that did not work. Right, and I, I I didn't enjoy that. And I had the same struggle you did with, there are some very big things that happen at the end of this story, but because you never really get a good feel of some of Alice's relationships outside of Addison Hatta, you don't, feel any emotion to any of the other characters. And that Except really means her mom. Like we get quite a bit right. with her mom. Well, and that's because her but mom. But even then that's still kind of surface. Right. Because it's, her mom's got such a big personality. It's it's hard oh, yeah. not, not to know her. But um, her friends, uh, Courtney, 
Yeah, I, I did like Courtney a lot just because I really like that Courtney. was a big personality. But then you have Chess, who is her other outside of Wonderland friend. That you're supposed to be a romantic interest that you don't yeah, realize it's, it's supposed to be a romantic interest till like the end. Yeah, it, which is supposed to be part of this possible love triangle. Right. That, I mean, I started to think that maybe his character could lead several different directions, uh -huh. but we never get to see him enough or he's not developed at all that right. when things Which happen is why I still think, this is my theory, that because we're introduced to a new Black Knight within this story, I think Chess is the new Black Knight transported back in time to try to fix whatever she's solving. Like yep. I really think that mm -hmm. that's, that's my theory. I, I, that's just my theory on this. Cause he says things like, don't you recognize me? And things like that where it just is like, that's the only person that that person that, that would make sense for to me. So. Right. Yeah. And I just, that I, I had the same thought when we first got introduced to the Black Knight. I had, and Chess, when we were first introduced to Chess, I had him highlighted. I'm like, I bet you he is the new Black Knight. But uh -huh. then several things happen that I'm like, but this is Wonderland, so things don't have to happen in order. Right. And so I'm like, maybe there's a little bit of time play going on. Yeah, so exactly. that, would, that would probably be the only reason I would continue this series is to figure out if my... Thoughts. I'm going to Google it and see if I'm Boo Boo the Fool. <laughs> if I'm not, I'm going to go ahead and read it, but I'm going to Google it and find out. So Chris has pointed out the insta love with Hada didn't help me. I don't think the training at the beginning should have been montaged like that. I agree. I would have loved more training time personally so that you could see their friendship develop better. And right. that would have done a lot of good to this story for me. Well, and I think if we had taken longer in the training, we could have been introduced to the world in a better fashion. And maybe we could Instead have of an out, info dump. <laughs> yeah. And we could have built out some of the other relationships too. Exactly. Instead of being like, oh, I've known this person for about a year. Ta da! <laughs> right? Because I felt like, man, they really skipped a ton of time here. That's mm -hmm. frustrating. You know, because it could have even given us more glimpses like, you know, every couple of months while she's training. This first book should have really just been more like training with a little bit of story, in my opinion, and kind of information about the world and stuff. And I guess to an extent, I understand the author's choice in that. You know, we're grown adults. We're going to enjoy different things than a teenager. This was fast paced, which to a teenager that might not necessarily enjoy reading, that would probably help them want to stay engaged with the story. So part of me understands that, but the other part of me is like, I just wanted more. <laughs> Take your time. Right. I'm not afraid to read like 1500 page nope. books. So <laughs> I'm a weird person here. But yeah, all in all, I think that's kind of all I have to say about this particular one. The rest I've kind of said in my vlogs, so. Yeah, I'm I mean, kind of fucked out on this one. This it, it's not it's not a, if you break it's it down. Not bad. Yeah, it's not if bad. If you break it down, it's I not worse. We did worse for this for this book club. Let's be real here. There have been titles that have been much worse than this one. Oh right, for it sure. was just not what we wanted it to be. And I, I think and that's I think, the easiest way to describe this one. Yeah, and it, it, there were there were some. I do like, I did like seeing some of the other less known characters from mm, like the, the Duchess. Story. Yeah, because a lot of times you don't get to see the Duchess. No, no one really. I thought that was. Movie. I thought that was a good choice as well. Yeah, having a character like the Duchess and the Princess rather than the Queen, some things like that. Like there were some good choices made, and they made sense for the kind of story she was trying to tell. Right like, or he? I don't know if the author's male or female. I didn't even look. Think female, if I remember correctly. Yes, female. Oh, I, I guess she's also a poet. 
So that might explain why story-wise things weren't as flushed out. So that makes a lot more sense to me. Actually. Well, and the poetry, that, I'm like, oh, okay. I, that yeah. Poet, poetry and verses had a lot to do in this story. It had a lot. Mm -hmm. It was the basis for the magical system. Yeah. Which I found that was intriguing enough. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I just don't have enough cool I that direction. More, but I'm I'm selfish and I always want more from my stories. That's part of why I read manga because they go on for a long time a lot of the time. Oh, yeah. So I get a lot of content. That makes me really extra happy. <laughs> All right. So do you want to introduce next month's pick or shall I? So Yay! we are going to be doing Unravel the Dusk, which is the sequel to Spin the Dawn that we did about this time last year. Uh -huh. And we are both so excited to continue this. This is basically like Project Runway meets Mulan. And we really enjoyed the first one. Um, I'm going to have to like go back and like at least skim or rewatch our live show to kind of- <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Myself. And then- so we will be discussing this on the last Sunday of August at the same time. That's kind of our standard time that we do these things and we love it. It's a good time. And yes, yeah, so there's plenty of time. If you want to read Spin the Dawn as well as Unravel the Dusk, you have the option to read both because they are pretty quick. They're not super long. I think these are usually like 300 to 350. Yeah, I think there's this standard. last one. I think is 350, and this is the conclusion. It is just a duology. I did check on that because I wasn't sure. So we are done after this book. That is the complete story. So I think that'll be the first series that we completely did. Well, we've done the Lunar Chronicles and this oh, one. That's true. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this week, my brain's just gone. I know. With the reading rush, we're both a little brain fried today. <laughs> so the fact that this has been as coherent as it has, I'm actually really proud of us. But yeah, so this will be the second series we've completed for this series so far. Most of the ones we've picked have been standalones or like first in series. Yeah, and the last of the Curse Breaker series isn't out yet. I know. Oh, January. Why aren't you here yet? If I get an early copy, I am not waiting. I'm just going to read it. Anyway. I will not blame you. Oh, All right. No. Uh huh. So, yes, I think that's everything for this particular one, unless you want to tell everybody what's coming to your channel soon, other than end of reading rush stuffs. I, I honestly don't have a lot planned except for eventually organizing the mess that is behind me <laughs> that keeps getting put off. So eventually I want to get to that and then just do a, a bookshelf office tour. So but, fun. Are you going to do a tour of your coloring setup? Mm -hmm. Or are you yeah, tweaking that's, it? That's my hope. Yeah, I just got all of the material for making a bench seat over here. Nice. So I'm looking forward to putting that together. And I think that'll be the start of getting all of this organized. Yeah. Um, Chris, if the first book is called Spin the Dawn, I'll type it in the comments as well. So yes, we are excited for that. On my channel, I'm going to be reorganizing my manga collection. There's some aesthetic things I want to change about it. So that's going to be happening now that all of my high is here. <laughs> and it has a home on the top of my shelf because it's all going to stay together. And that's just fine. I like it there. <laughs> and then um, outside of that, I've got releases on my radar coming up this week. My bullet journal for, April, for August, not April, wrong A month coming up this week. And then my birthday's on Saturday. So Yay! yeah, other than that, it's just going to kind of be wrapping things up. Oh, I've got Thirsty Thursday on Thursday. That's on my channel again. Um, that's Midnight Secretary, which was, it was so good. The vlog for that <laughs> will be out on Thursday, which is the day of the live show. I've just decided I'm going to upload it that morning so people can watch it. And yes, it's going to be good. I'm so excited. It's all edited and ready to go. I'm just 
Nice. Oh, crap. I just realized I did a boo-boo. I might have deleted it. Oh, that's going to suck. That whole reaction vlog was so good. Oh, well. Sad. Because I don't have the footage anywhere anymore. Because I try to keep my laptop pretty light so things run really effectively. Oh, yeah. And I think I accidentally deleted it. I'm going to have to check. But I think it's gone. And I'm a little sad now. Well, if it's only recently, you might be able to do a recovery. It would have been over a week ago at this point. Because I cleared oh. it all off side room for the reading oh, rush. no. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I'll have to disappoint people, but they'll get all my thoughts. It'll be fine. So, anyways. <laughs> I'll cry about it later. <laughs> so, thank you guys for watching. Come join us next month when we talk about Unravel the Dusk and the whole series as a whole. I, does the series have a name? The Blood of Stars. Yes. So that's the name of the series. So we'll discuss the series in its entirety in the next live show as we'll have read both parts. And yeah, that's it. We will see you guys next time. April is linked down below. So make sure you go and follow her. She's amazing. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.